So in this lecture we're going to start doing some code for the first time. What I want you to do is um, click over here and you'll get this panel come out. Download the 3JS underscore RPG zip file. Extract it to a folder of your choice and then you're ready to go. I'm using brackets as my editor. Um, you can use whatever text editor you want. Um, brackets is, is a good one and it's freely available. If you look at the folder you've just downloaded, you'll find there's a V0 folder. And in there, there's just two files. Um, let's have a look at the index.html file first. This is, this is all that we've got in it. We are defining some CSS, so the body's got zero margins, and if we create a canvas, it's going to be the full width and the full height of whatever it's set into, which in our instance is going to be the body. We've given it a title, my first 3.js app, and we're downloading two script files. The, the main 3GS library is minimized, which you'll find two folders up in the libs folder. Um, and the, the, the file game.js, which we're just about to create. I'm using ES6, so, I'm, so game is going to be a class, and we're going to create a single ver a single instance of that class but we're going to wait until all DOM contents loaded before we do that and just for debugging purposes we're going to make window.game equal game so we can get at it um, in the console in our browser so that's all you need in the HTML file so let's have a look at the game file itself. If you're unfamiliar with ES6 classes, they must have a constructor. And the constructor is called whenever you call new on a new instance of this class. In this, we're going to create a scene. So we use new three, everything we deal with um, 3GS has three in caps, three dot scene, so a new three dot scene. We're going to create a camera. It's going to be a perspective camera. The angle of the camera is going to be 75 degrees. That would alter the width that you can see, the, the width, the, the viewing width. We're going to give it an aspect ratio. The aspect ratio we've got is based on our window. So it's the in inner width of the window divided by the height to give us the aspect ratio. And then we've got a near value. So the nearest that we're going to be able to render something is 0.1 from the camera. And the furthest away is going to be 1,000. That's the range. We're creating a renderer, and the renderer we're going to create is a WebGL renderer. And we're setting the size of our renderer to be the size of our window. And then the renderer, in turn, creates a canvas. And the canvas is this DOM element. So we need to append that to our document, otherwise we won't see it. And then we create a bit of geometry. So the geometry is going to be a box, like the cube we saw in the earlier lecture. We're going to create a light, which is a directional light with color white. FF, FF, FF is FF for red, green, and blue. You're no doubt familiar with that. We're going to set a position for the light that's zero 
in the x-axis, 20 in the y-axis, and 10 in the z-axis. So that's 20 going up, and that's 10 coming out of the screen. And then we're going to set an ambient light, which um, doesn't have a direction at all, and that will just and that will just be this grey colour. And then we're going to create a material. It's a fong material, so that's going to use lighting. And the colour of it is quite a bright blue. And then we create a cube. That's a mesh. A mesh has got geometry as defined by the box geometry here, so it's one wide, one high and one deep. And it has a material as defined by this fong material that we've created here, so it's blue. Because we created a scene, we can now add this to our scene, so the cube's added to the scene, the light we created is added to the scene, and the ambient light we created, they're all added to the scene. And then we define the position of the camera as to be three away from the center of the screen. The cube, by default, is going to pivot around zero, zero, zero. And then we start our animation. Because we're in a class, this calls the animate method of the class. We want to be calling this continuously so that it updates in a on a regular basis, up to 60 times a second. And so we use request animation frame and we pass in a little function here where it's going to call the game animate function yet again. In the animate function, we rotate the cube in the x-axis and the y-axis by a small amount. Then we render using our renderer the scene using our camera. Now you need to use um, the web server for Chrome that you installed earlier. Go to Chrome, search for extensions, you'll get this panel come up. And if you click that, Hopefully you've pointed that at the resource you've just downloaded. And if you have, then you should have a libs and a lost treasure folder. For now we'll go to this one. And there you have the rotating cube. And if I open the console, then I can turn that into wireframe. Or bounce it back into a solid. The reason we define that is that it allows us to get access to game outside this function. And that allows us to use the console to manipulate properties of things in our scene.